handful of spectators came to see. A tug of war, 22 nameless men grappling in the mud. They called it pro football. Hi, I'm Steve Sable. And those lines of script from the 1966 film, They Call It Pro Football, were the first words that John Facenda ever spoke for NFL films. From that point on, his dramatic baritone became one of the key elements of our filmmaking style. Before he started narrating our films, John had earned considerable success as a local TV newscaster here in Philadelphia. We thought that John's voice would help take NFL films in a new direction. Before John, our voiceovers were done by play-by-play -play announcers like Lindsey Nelson and Chris Schenkel. They were real pros, perfect for that area of sports that depends on names and numbers. But sport also appeals to us because it exists in the realm of the imagination. And it was in this realm that John Facenda would become the once and future king. He made his debut by narrating, they call it pro football. It starts with a whistle and ends with a gun. 60 minutes of close in action from kickoff to touchdown. This is pro football, the sport of our time. The men who play it are the best there are. Disciplined professionals who perform on a stage 100 yards long. For the audience crowding the stands, the drama begins with a slap of leather in the song of Men in Motion. Eleven trained men face to face on the field of play. Each man a specialist, but one man stands above the rest. He occupies the most critical position in the game. He is the quarterback. He plots, directs, and executes the on-field fortunes of his team. The quarterback lives in a world of pressure. How well he lives with it and reacts to it determines how good he is. He must have a cool disregard for danger and the courage to take punishment. quarterback has two formidable allies. One is deception. By clever faking, he can confuse the defense and open a clear path for the play. His second ally is the forward pass. It's a long bomb. A screen pass over charging linemen. A bullet from the midst of a traffic jam. The pass in the hands of a pro quarterback is a bolt of lightning that can strike anywhere, anytime. This yard of space is called no man's land. Football games are won or lost by control of this narrow strip of land. The battle for it is a violent one. The hands of combat. The hands of pros. This is the part of the game rarely seen by the spectator. The shattering impact of a block. The mountainous size of an onrushing defender. The splintering force of a forearm shiver. One ton of muscle with a one-track mind. Down in the dirt, the lair of the lineman. This is where the game is played. The fringe of no man's land is patrolled by the linebackers. The search and destroy men of the defense. Number 50, search and destroy. 
Number 58, search and destroy. Sunday after Sunday, pro quarterbacks have learned that whatever play they call, a linebacker is likely to meet it head on. This is the face of the tiger. The passion in John's voice accentuated the drama of pro football. And it also brought out the poetry of the sport. Do you fear the force of the wind, the slash of the rain? Go face them and fight them. Be savage again. The palms of your hands will thicken. The skin of your cheek will tan. You'll grow ragged and weary and wet, but you must do the best you can. Something somber in the skies. Something somber in the eyes of the men. Late autumn in the air, but something of winter in their faces. The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea. With a rollicking song, he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. His face is weather-beaten. He wears a hooded sash with a silver hat about his head and a bristling black mustache. He growls as he storms the country, a villain big and bold and the trees all shake and quiver and quake as he robs them of their gold. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. John's voice was like a musical instrument. In fact, he saw lines of script as if they were passages in a symphony. He prepared for every narration by making special musical notations in the margins of the script. Now, here's one of John's old scripts, and he's written here the word allegro, which means it should be read in a lively fashion. Now, down here, he's written the word fortissimo, which means forcefully. John was truly NFL film's maestro of myth. And even today, 12 years after he passed away, sportscasters and comedians still love to imitate him. It was like slow motion. It was like those, those films of, those NFL films. Joe Montana <laughs> threw a, you know, perfect spiral over the middle, and Jerry Rice faked out the cornerback. That guy with a right. ba -ba 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 that. Although John was a local institution, he wouldn't have been recognized by too many people outside of the Philadelphia area. Yet, he loved to act and was a true ham in the best sense of the word, though. In 1980, we offered John a modest but meaty part that required him to appear in front of the camera instead of behind the microphone. Hello there, I'm John Facenda. You are about to see a sneak preview of a buffo socko big screen blockbuster soon to be released by NFL Films. Let's take a look, shall we? And as they say in Tinseltown, roll them. John was a good sport with a terrific sense of humor. Listen to these outtakes. Can I use the word frightfully rather than uh, frighting for Lily? I'm going to have trouble with that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, that is. That's a, that's a tough word. Okay, that's fine because we still keep the alliteration. Okay, so it's... Okay frightfully instead of frighteningly. I'm glad you said it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was fiercely fought, but frightfully blarred. Let's take that over again. This name is Hawkins, John. An original Raider, Wayne Harkins. I got that wrong that time. Wayne Harkins. Shoot, now, come on, John. And original Raider... Oh, no, wait a minute. <clears throat> and original Raider... No. I, I'm trying to figure out your, your damn right. Hawkins, John. Hawkins. Wayne Harkins. Yeah, I had it then. Wayne Harkins. No. Nope. Wayne Harkins. You stupid. John's warmth and 
courtly manner made him enjoyable to work with. And of course, his voice helped establish pro football as a game that was enjoyable to watch. The game is the man in the funny hat and it's White Shoes Johnson and the Juice. And it's Franco's Army and Brian's song. It's a place where new legends are born and old ones endure. The game is a time warp where the young dream of growing up and the old remember youth. And for a few hours on Sunday, neither fantasy nor reminiscence seems foolish. Although we've worked with many fine narrators, it was a special thrill to write a script for John Facenda. He could read a laundry list and make it sound dramatic, but not everyone could write for him. The lines had to be compact and balanced with strong verbs and only a few adjectives. And the metaphors, they had to be clear and crisp. We all knew that we'd written something special when John would review the script and he'd say, Stevie, you've given me a horse I can ride. Well, here are some of the true thoroughbreds that John Facenda rode in championship style. In Green Bay, Wisconsin, on December 31st, 1967, the temperature was 15 degrees below zero. Lombardi's Packers and the Dallas Cowboys battled each other and the elements in a cruel rite of manhood that would decide the championship of the National Football League. Had the Packers won this game easily, as it first appeared they would, they would have been remembered as the team of the 60s. But by winning the game as they eventually did, they became a team for the ages because the character of their performance surpassed the achievement itself. Starr takes the ball, backpedals, looks downfield, flips a short pass, complete to Anderson. He's at the 35. He moves to the 30-yard line, and it will be very close. Trailing by three points with time running out, the Packers drove 68 yards across the frozen field and into legend. He flips the pass. It's complete to Chuck Mercine. He's at the 25, the 20. With only three minutes to play, all the hopes and dreams of an entire season rested on the shoulders of one man, one old pro. One last moment for the master. Sensing the collapse of the cowboy empire, they stood like barbarians at the gates of Rome. The battering ram of the eagles was its defense, a unit that consisted of more spit than polish, more grit than glitter. now had a choice of two plans. They could fence and parry to protect their lead, or they could attack to destroy and demolish. The San Diego Chargers. While their offense flew on the wings of Mercury, their defensive line struck with a hammer of Thor. The young knights and the old warriors carved a battlefield in the sky. He 
doesn't swear, smoke, drink, or spit. His favorite beverage is milk. His favorite movie is The Sound of Music. And his middle name is Herbert. George Allen is so square, says a rival coach, that you could roll him on a Las Vegas craps table. Yet George Allen is a man for his time and certainly a man for his place. For three years, Blander waited on the sidelines. An old soldier, supposedly too ancient for battle, but too stubborn to fade away. Doug Atkins was like a storm rolling over a Kansas farmhouse. He came from all directions, and all there was to do was to tie down what you could and hope he didn't take the roof. Men of magic, men of muscle, the men of Notre Dame. Wake up the echoes, cheering their names. All right, let's go, man, John! When John had a horse he could ride, he was at his best coming down the home stretch. No one could ring down the final curtain or raise a goose bump like John Facenda. Here are a few of his most famous final lines. Beneath a giant birch tree, where Father Soren once sat smoking a peace pipe with the Indians, rest the bones of Newt Rockney. His spirit has yet to be buried. Two teams have gained a champion's fame, two teams of men both skilled and game. Men who have battled as brothers through combat thick and thin, and now they confront each other for a prize only one can win. And here are the closing lines of the last script that John Facenda ever read for NFL films. In Super Bowl 18, the Raiders again scaled the heights of football greatness and stood alone on the summit. A team of young men filled with promise and old veterans filled with pride. Raiders are an honor to the team's glorious past and the world champions of pro football's present. <laughs>